And Rob, just, just to recap there, uh, in terms of the uh, weekly new instructions which we've seen a couple of weeks ago, 551, that's 50% higher than the average number of weekly instructions which we've had per week in 2023. So real significant number that. Yeah, great bit of intel, great, uh, great work with a data team to pull that together. everyone welcome back to another edition of super prime uk with your super prime mj group valuers myself rob cohen and myself james wild hope you're all well we're moving on in the year things are rapidly winding down for 2023 as we hit q4 the fall october 2023 james how have you been yeah really good thanks rob how about yourself all good, all good. Working away, travelling, meetings, aggressively hitting the market as we look to mm. close out uh, a challenging year. That's it. And I uh, can't, can't wait to discuss some of the football later of, of VAR, particularly topical this week. Yeah. Um, and also, I think you touched on the weather. I think it's going to be the, the hottest birthday I've ever had. Uh, it could, could be 25 at the weekend. So something to look forward to. I've never been able to have a, an outdoor barbecue at my birthday. So Heat wave at the weekend, James. Uh, so so it should be a great celebration for you on the back of uh, record uh, temperatures in September. So all of that July and August misery has been put to bed with uh, a storming September and a, a, a strong October. That's it. And uh, just in terms of uh, bringing you some, some live data this week, um, the past couple of weekly sets of data, uh, if, if you've seen our newsletter, um, a particularly uh, active week at the start of uh, September, 551 new instructions in the market, which uh, it's 50% higher than the average weekly figure statistic which we've seen for 2023, and the highest weekly new instructions since October 2020. So a real significance that in terms of bringing new stock to the market uh, to, to allow buyers um, access to uh, a wider range of properties, uh, in, inviting them to the market. And it, 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 Rob, it comes on the back of quite a lot of negativity, which we've seen in the last week in, in the press in terms of uh, various um, uh, data sources. Uh, we'll touch on those next. Uh, Her Majesty's Land Registry um, uh, and also <clears throat> some of the nationwide house price indices. Yeah, I think this is a real key, key indicator for everyone that follows the show or maybe for the ones that are listening, watching for the first time. This is a really big indicator, okay? This is the absolute inverse of where we were three years ago coming out of the pandemic, where which led to a, a mini boom or a, a booming market, let's just say, with high volume, high transaction. So a lot of property came onto the market then for differing reasons. And now suddenly, for the first time in three years, we've got a similar level of stock coming onto the market, but for very different reasons, on the back of economic uncertainty, volatility, interest rates increasing, and people may be um, suffering or being challenged with affordability issues, thus looking to exit from their properties, hence the reason why a lot of stock has come on stream in September 2023. I think it's a fascinating point, and everyone looking for key indices and data points to reference, this is as big as they get. Um, for the last three years in terms of uh, product coming on stream. And Rob, just, just to recap there, uh, in terms of the uh, weekly new instructions which we've seen a couple of weeks ago, 551, that's 50% higher than the average number of weekly instructions which we've had per week in 2023. So real significant number that. Yeah, great bit of intel, great, uh, great work with a data team to pull that together. 
And uh, well, obviously, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Bank of England's decision to hold interest rates at 5.25% uh, uh, brought some positivity uh, as well. It's encouraged mortgage uh, providers, mortgage lenders to become a little bit more competitive in the market in terms of their product and pricing. Um, but I, th I think lower... Uh, interest rates are, are way off as we're still yet to determine if interest rates have actually uh, topped out possibly one more rate rise um, uh, from the monetary policy committee how many more committee meetings this year james another another few uh, i think there's another three this year okay so i think what we're looking for in the market and to continue that positive trend we need a hold 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 position Mm. I think it, it's fundamental going into 2024 that the market understands that we've reached a peak in interest rate rises and then all, all pricing and product can be based off of that, which should create some attractive or more attractive rates to the market and maybe some competition there. So we're looking for a hold, hold, hold position uh, to see out 2023 to ensure that we have the right platform for a stronger year in 2024. That's it. Thanks, Rob. Uh, and just, just to recap with some data on that point, so the average rate for a five-year fixed mortgage has fallen to below 6%, 5.99, uh, for the first time since early July. So uh, just a little bit of evidence there of some of the products and pricing starting just to move, move in. Uh, as a result of the uh, in base rate holding at 5.25%. Uh, just to further uh, data source, Rob, uh, Nationwide House Price Index, uh, obviously just a caveat, it is focused solely uh, on their mortgage products, so cash buyers are, are excluded um, from their data in entirety. Um, it has revealed that average prices are, um, in the UK have fallen uh, by just under £2,000 to September there, so uh, a bit of a meaningful full fall that in terms of the, the average. Uh, all regions in the UK recorded a house price fall in quarter three, uh, with the southwest being the worst performing, uh, whereby prices saw a year on year fall of 6.3% uh, there. Um, average prices have further weakened uh, in August, Rob, falling by 0.8%, so again, quite significant uh, drop that for, 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 for a monthly figure. Um, and that is seasonally adjusted as well, just to uh, yeah. caveat that. Thanks for that, James. For our reference purposes, uh, as we all know, there is a quite a big lag in, in, in that data coming through. And so I can comfortably tell you that Q4 will reflect a continuing trend on that basis on all the work we've been doing over the last few weeks and months on where pricing is, that trend will continue uh, as we move into quarter four of 2023. Yeah, and uh, just another data source, Rob. Obviously, there's a huge lag on, on some of this data, uh, and it has been a bit of a negative cloud the last two weeks uh, with a lot of data sources just highlighting some of this negative uh, negative stats. And um, if we rewind a couple of months, actually, um, Rob and I, who are generally quite positive, we're actually a, a little bit downbeat about the market and just saying um, about the lack of transactions in the market and what a quiet summer it was and actually uh, how the market closed down almost a month earlier than usual in, in that sort of June, July period, which, which were remarkably quiet um, uh, there. But uh, in terms of mortgage approvals, um, we're down at 45,400 uh, were approved in August, and that's 30% down against the monthly average prevailing for 2019 uh, pre-pandemic. So uh, roughly a, a third down on that. So that, uh, if, if we rewind from where this data is based, um, that sort of highlights what we've been saying previously uh, for that summer period. Uh, and what a quiet, um, deflated period it was in, in the UK residential property market. Yeah, James, I mean, this has always been on the cards. It was a, a given that this data was going to finally filter through. Uh, we were obviously very much aware of that because of the volume of work that we've been carrying out. And I think we sent a message to the market. Um, the valuation space has, has been highly challenged and 
uh, we, we were very much aware that those mortgages and mortgage approvals were dramatically down and um, you know this evidence and, and uh, information just con confirms or reconfirms what we've been um, discussing uh, in previous shows. That's it. After 14 consecutive rate rises, it's really taken its toll uh, on the pro on the property market. Uh, so it's taking us all the way back to December 21, uh, which was the first of the rate rises. Um, hopefully now, uh, whereby we've see, seen a pause there, it allows for some more stable lending conditions, and, and meaning buyers and also sellers who, who facilitate the market uh, will be able to ca catch their breath slightly. And, and I think that is signalled in some of the... Uh, weekly data which we've brought you this week for new instructions yeah people want stability stability is really important and now that the trend of those rate increases has stopped i, I think it could uh, add confidence to the market and hopefully uh, allow people to make decisions on whether they're either looking to buy or sell moving forward yeah, uh, just, a, just a note of, of caution. Uh, furthermore, there will be a lot of people uh, who will be rolling off their more favourable uh, fixed rate mortgages uh, as we move uh, towards the end of 2023 and into 2024. Uh, but ultimately, I think sentiment should improve in the market as volatility reduces. Uh, and I think that the, the UK's house price correction, Rob, um, we've seen from Halifax data, nationwide data, for much of this year, uh, house prices have been in, in a steady decline. And I think um, most of the correction is going to happen this year uh, with potentially a, a flatter market as we move into 2024. Uh, and then depending on the sort of global uh, and political stability, uh, maybe back to some modest house price growth um, after the next general election. But um, that, that's the sort of forecast for the next 12 to 18 months. Um, all, all sort of fairly backed up by the data and hopefully uh, the latest data, Rob, has seen us bottom out in terms of the uh, stock shortages on the market. Yep, fully agree with that, James. And uh, just to end on some, uh, some positivity, Rob, um, on the back of some of the, uh, the weekly sales data, uh, using Zoopla's house price index as an anecdotal barometer of which direction the market is going, it's revealed that demand for houses has, it has improved uh, for all reasons, and it's risen by around 12% uh, in, in September, following a, a decline over the summer months, uh, which largely due to mortgage rate rises, uh, and also typically quite a period in the market with school holidays and things. Yep. On the ground, things are improving, James. The sentiment is marginally, uh, uh, nominally better. And we are very much hoping that that is a trend that continues for the remainder of this year and into 2024. It's been tough, it's been challenging, it's been difficult. And all these small green shoots that we are seeing uh, in the medium to long term should lead to improved market conditions. And as and when we hear of those or see them, we will be sure to let you know immediately. Uh, and, and Rob, moving on to maybe some, some football uh, discussion. Obviously, we have uh, Champions League this week. Uh, Newcastle returns to Champions League, but I think I think we're still hung up on the controversy of last weekend with, with, with VAR. Obviously, Liverpool requesting the uh, audio files uh, from the refereeing uh, room. There, can't wait to hear those. Actually, I don't, I don't know your thoughts. Well. It, it just goes to show you, you can have all the data, all of the intel, all of the automation, uh, all of the technology in the world. But if you don't have the right people uh, analysing that with the experience and knowledge to make the right decisions, you're left with a bit of egg in your face. And, and, and ultimately, that's where um, the, the referees and the VAR team have ended up after what can only be described as 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 being a, a real letdown. Yeah, it was a tough, a tough refereeing game that as well. And obviously the referee got sent to the screen for the, um, for the red card. Uh, I think it was initially a yellow card, but as soon as the referee goes to the screen, it, it, they always accept the off-field refereeing decision. Was it a red card for you, do you think? A little sort of I think, stung twice? I think it was a bit of an amber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was sort of a, maybe a 70-30 a red. Yeah, but, difficult one, yeah, difficult. A tough one, and then uh, Manchester United continued their uh, poor run of form, losing Crystal Palace, fresh off beating them in the Carabao Cup, 3-0 to def 
one nil defeat at Old Trafford. Uh, Chelsea got over the line uh, against Fulham, um, and um, a series, tough couple of fixtures for Arsenal coming up. Um, and like I said Champions League this week with Newcastle um, first home tie in the Champions League for a number of years. Yeah, should be exciting. Should be exciting. Um, we're going to have great news for you over the coming months as the data in Intel and property lending and economic conditions hopefully improve and we'll be here to share that all with you. Appreciate all your support and we will see you all again soon on Super Prime UK. Thanks, James. Thanks, Rob. Thanks very much, everyone.